Welcome everyone, I'm Nausicaa and this is The Cool Heart. I'm obsessed with art, so I can wait to share with you this incredible contemporary artist, from pop art to street art to photographers. But we'll, we'll also talk about fashion, business, woman empowering, and most of all, we will have conversation with cool people with a big, big heart. Today we're having a very special guest. She is definitely a cool heart and she is very well known for a lip series and a collaboration with Adidas. We will have the pleasure to have all of the stories beyond our hearts. Please welcome Lina Valentina. Hi Lina, how are you? Hi, I'm good, how are you? So happy to see you. So tell me, how was the old quarantine? And are you in New York right now or? I am currently in Connecticut. I've decided that I need to avoid the war zone because New York is just not in a good place right now. So I came to hide out in Connecticut. Wow. How long have you been there? Like two months, over two months now or? For like a month and a half. So how have you been feeling? Creative? Um, I must say quarantine was actually really good for me. I don't like Corona. I don't want people to get sick. I don't, I obviously don't want to see people dying from it, but being stuck in one place and not having the freedom of leaving the apartment has been actually super good for me. Um, I'm the type of personality that like, granted, I'll get a bunch of ideas at night, with or without, you know, our world going through something. But when I wake up, if I have freedom to leave, I usually am all over the place. I'm always going somewhere. And by the time I get home, I either already forget my inspiration that I have, or I don't feel like painting. But now that I've been locked on lockdown, I've been just constantly creating, constantly thinking about things, constantly writing ideas down I have like a full notebook full of stuff so wow. it's been good for me <laughs> I'm that's like that's it was a blessing it was a blessing in disguise for sure you know that's so great to hear that because there's so many people that are going crazy they just want to you know go out and stuff and I feel like like you in a positive way of course that's you know what's going on is extremely sad and extremely scary like we don't even know like how the whole thing is gonna and hopefully it's going to end soon. But I'm like you. I think there were so many positive ways to just do things that we want to do and we keep pushing because we don't have time or, you know, we always find excuses or not really excuses, but we all have busy lives. So that's great to just um, get things done. That's amazing. So did you paint a little bit? Oh, yeah. I've been painting nonstop. Like, I just have been just letting all my emotions come out on the canvas. <laughs> I, like I, that. I like that. I like that. I think it's good to be able to have time to just listen to ourselves, you know, because there's so yes. many things that disturb us every day. So many other things like could be social media, could be, you know, things exactly. that you just don't exactly. listen to. So just going back to the roots and have time to just, you know, listen to the silence <laughs> is actually, yeah. you know. Uh, I feel like also you you learn a lot about yourself when you're by yourself. I feel like it's super important to be like just alone. Lots of people don't really have the chance to do that because they're either working or they hang out with friends. But like once you have a lot of time to be alone, you learn a lot about yourself. And for me as an artist, that was like very important to go through that. Amazing. So I want you to tell us about your work a little bit more deeper. You've been very well known for the lips, right? The, the big mouse, beautiful, gorgeous lips with a zipper. And you did a whole series with that, with the guns, with LA, with um, different kind of signs and colors. And you did also a collab with Adidas, right? In Los Angeles. So tell us about the lips a little bit, because this is, I would say, what you been very well known for you know so the lips and the zipper came from an idea people a lot of people actually think that the zipper means like shutting your mouth it actually means the opposite it means not giving anybody the power to shut you up and giving you having the freedom of expressing yourself and being yourself 
Hence why the teeth of the zipper go into different directions in the middle of the mouth is because if somebody went to go zip the zipper, it wouldn't zip. So it basically represents not giving anybody the power to shut you up. So that was my whole lips thing, which I've, you know, been doing for a while and just sticking to that, to that message. That's great. And now I've seen you did so many like um, new series with Diamond, amazing, gorgeous diamonds, um, very, you know, pastel colors. And the diamond, the first time you sent me the video, I was like, oh my God, it looks like a real one. How did you do that? And, and I showed my daughter, I was like, look, she was like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. Oh, you look thank at it, you. Look at it, and it looks so real, I have to say. It looks like unreal. You're like, wow, how did you do that? So how the whole things, you know, because how did you jump from the lips with the zipper to the diamond series, which is gorgeous, but so different, you know, from what we used to know you for? Um, so the reason I started painting diamonds is because in August, um, I went through a very, very traumatic breakup very sudden, very unexpected, um, which completely like crushed me. So I, I didn't even know how I was going to like come out of it mentally. It was just, it took a huge impact on me. So months later down the road, once I started healing a little bit and feeling returning to myself, the only word that just like popped in my head to describe the process and the experience is that like wow like okay like here I am I'm okay and I was like I'm unbreakable so I wanted to like let those emotions out on the canvas and to basically almost memorialize what I went through and getting out of that t difficult time so the lips and the zipper obviously was just not speaking to me it was it was a different message um and this time I just needed to paint something to let everybody know including mainly myself that I'm unbreakable so I kept thinking and just trying to decide what comes to mind when I think of the word un unbreakable and a diamond popped in my head I'm like well diamonds are unbreakable and diamonds are durable diamonds are very strong and diamonds are created on so much pressures you know put down on something that's in the dirt um so I painted my first diamond which was super challenging <laughs> I was like oh no why did I even start painting this but then I got through it and I, that was my message that unbreakable and then I started the whole collection of just unbreakable things. <laughs> That's amazing. That is so powerful. That is extremely powerful to do that and, and inspiring because you took something that broke you, something that is so you know negative or so hard to go through that is extremely challenging emotionally, obviously, and you turn it into something so beautiful and I didn't know the story before, so I'm very surprised to know that it's related to a heartbreak. And when you see the painting and you see the color that you use for the background, usually I remember the, the pink pastel, the Tiffany blues, um, all those colors are so soft. I would never have, you know, thought one second it was related to, uh, to such a hard experience. Cause it's, cause it's bright. Yeah. I feel like it's the opposite with me whenever I'm going through like a difficult situation, difficult time in my life. I always paint bright colors, but when I'm like happy, nothing's wrong. There's zero stress. I tend to start soul searching and painting darker things. It's like, I'm always so opposite. I guess, I don't know if it has to do with just like, you know, color therapy. Cause you know, they say if you surround yourself with brighter colors you'll have like a better day so I feel like whenever like if I'm sad then I paint bright colors not all the time I mean not all the time it's not like every wait oh, okay not not all the time because obviously like sometimes it doesn't mean that all my bright paintings means I was depressed that day but for this is just sometimes I, I've noticed myself that whenever I'm 
happy, I paint darker. And if I'm sad, I paint brighter. Just, I don't know. It's just a thing. <laughs> yeah, things about, you know, color therapy, that is so interesting because, you know, I feel like during this period of time with the COVID-19, most of the people trying to, to listen a little bit more to themselves and to just go back to the roots. And, and I really do think, as you said, it's so important because there's so many people that are feeling a little bit down, you know, right now because they're locked up. But you're right, colors does help so much mentally, like that give you the energy, you know, the smile. That it's like listening to different kind of music, you know. You will listen or or a yes. pop song, and hey, you're finally in the mood. You know? <laughs> so that that's amazing because, yeah, you're right. Everything is related, and and this is this is very very amazing to see your work. I would have never think one second it, it was related to something so so hard. So, and I also see that you have a beautiful Rolex with a little bit diamond that looks so real too. And I'm Thank like, yeah, you. I did the same Lina Valentina that I know. Not, not because I, you know, it's just because it's so different from your style that I yeah. have been familiar with for so many years that I think it's so exciting to discover a new, you know, new side of you, actually. In an artistic way, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I decided to do the Rolex is because I just wanted to continue to challenge myself when it comes to the, to, to the diamonds. So I was just browsing and thinking to myself, hmm, what, what does have a lot of diamonds? And I wasn't really feeling like jewelry or necklaces, like, so, I mean, watch kind of is considered jewelry, but I'm saying like, I didn't feel like doing something too, I don't know. So I just, I went with this watch because it obviously has so many diamonds and I just wanted to pick something that I thought that I wasn't going to be able to complete. So I picked Rolex and took me a long time, but it's complete. <laughs> yeah, it looks really, it looks really good, actually. It looks really good. So now, most of the theory of the diamond that you have, do you have, like, do you know what you're going to do next? Or Yes, I do. I. It's funny. That that's another thing I've noticed about myself and I've learned during this period is that sometimes, like, I'll, I'll start having, like, an idea in my head about a new painting, but I'm not like fully there yet where I can describe it to myself what I want to paint. But before that, I'll be able to describe it with a melody, which is really weird. So like I started seeing kind of colors in my head, like where I want to go with colors. And then I was able to describe it with a melody, but not necessarily like, okay, I'm painting this, I'm painting a house with da da da. Like, so I guess like a melody pops in my head first and then I'll listen to the melody over and over and over again. And then it's just like little puzzle pieces that just like come together. And then I have like an idea down and I write it down and then I start painting. But yeah, it's going to be something with a lot of pastel colors. It's going to be very feminine, very feminine piece. No lips, um, diamonds, not a diamond heart. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet because I don't know, I, I don't I know if I'm actually going to paint it yet, but I already have an idea down. And I'm really, I don't know why, all of a sudden I'm like obsessed with like the nude beige and like tan colors. So the I want to... Is it the Louboutin nude? It's going to be that color, but it's not going to be shoes. <laughs> no, of course nice it's so exciting to to just like you know i, I said earlier if i had one wish that would be in, in a, an artist's mind for about an hour because i'm i'm sure that there might be like a million ideas that i feel like you could totally there. tap into that you could totally tap into your artistic side for sure i feel like anybody could <laughs> oh, good and um so what are you working on right now um, I'm working right now on just paintings for a client. They're custom pieces. Um, nothing f that's going. Look, I mean, it's already sold. But it's a uh, it's a painting from my when I painted something in 2015, and something very different from like any of my work. I'm like just completely not what I usually paint. Um, but I'm re I repainted it for a client because I decided, I mean, they, they bought the old version of it, but I was like, you know what? 
I needed like an excuse to repaint it. I was like, so do you mind if I repaint it? Cause I want to like use my new skills that I've learned since 2015 and apply them, reapply them. So that's what I'm working on right now. Um, once I'm done with that, I also have a few jackets, but once I'm done with that, I'm going to start working on the painting that I was just telling you about with pastel colors. Nice. I, I feel like it's, it's a new brand, Lina Valentina, you know, you get, you're having so many different kind of inspirations and new colors and new style. I mean, it's a different style. Well, that's the thing. Quarantine made what it made me like, be a blessing in disguise because now like I also if I have like usually if I have an idea I just paint it I don't really think into it I don't like now if I have an idea and it's a certain style of art I actually want to like learn about it even though I have something like I just start so I got a bunch of books to read so I kind of like been also studying art so not just like just being to myself and painting whatever comes in my head I've been also just learning about other people's art and stuff like that so maybe that's why my style also is about to change because I've been just like studying it but you know like every artist if you look at Picasso there's so many different periods in their life where you can you know see that a, a certain period of time they were you know in a certain they use a certain techniques and then different colors after so I really do think it it's the life of an artist. I mean, you guys experimenting, new things, new feelings, new techniques, new colors, new horizon, you know? That's great. Yeah. And, um, do you plan to go back to California or? What, oh, what? yes. I'm coming back. Are you Definitely. coming back? Okay. You're coming I'm too back. scared to come back now because I feel like I would. I have to like move and do everything all over because I, I was living with my ex-boyfriend. Um, but like right now, I feel like it's not a good time because I feel like I don't even know if the real estate agencies are open. So I'm, I'm too paranoid to like go and do all that. So I'm going to wait for this time to pass. And that's like another thing I was, I've been trying to really grow as a person during this difficult time that we we're faced with by just like helping others. So I've been trying not to be as, I'm trying to be selfless and just, since I don't, you know, I don't have to go to work. I don't have to do any of that stuff. So I've been just trying to take the time and help people that are working and working their butts off to get us through this difficult time. So this whole time has been a lot about just like learning things about yourself and growing in every different way as that's a human, great. an artist. That's great. I mean, that that's... Uh... I really do think you're going to grow, you know, grow a lot and learn a lot about yourself in every way from a woman, artist, and that's good. That's positive. I and hope so. You used to live in New York, right? Before you moved to California. Yes, yes, yes. So, and, and I remember like uh, when we first met, uh, you just moved to California and um, it's so different. What is, as an artist, what is the big difference between New York and LA? What do you feel like well, you as an artist when you were there back in the day, making your, you know, trying to make it right there, you know, what, what, how was your journey in New York and, you know? As an artist, I feel like, and a lot of people actually would disagree with me, um, New York is obviously a lot more, like they say, a lot more into the whole art scene. There's a lot more galleries. Um, to me, LA was a lot better than New York, maybe because I just started painting in New York and then I moved to California and that's when like I started really getting into it. But I found LA much more inspiring which is really weird because I'm the kind of person that like really loves architecture like I need to be walking around the architecture it's what inspires me granted I don't paint anything that has to do with architecture but it's just like something that I need LA doesn't really offer that but LA has been a lot more inspiring to me as an artist I'm not sure why 
Like I always, I've painted so many things in LA, a lot more paintings that I've done in New York my whole life. Like I just, I remember the first two years when I lived in LA, I painted a new painting literally once a week. I was just like, wow. And I got into all the bright colors when I was in LA, probably actually because of you mainly, because I remember when we when we met at, at your gallery, I remember you told me that you're like, oh, I like your work, but it's a little too dark. And that's when like, I did not paint anything bright. I was strictly black, red, white, strictly. I never painted anything pink. I was just, so you kind of like challenged me to get into like those bright colors. But I remember. So- I remember when we first met and, and I saw the lips, I was like, wow, that's genius. Because now, of course, we see all those lips on t-shirts and stuff, but you came up with the lips way before that, right? Now there's so many you new know, brands that, you know, have printed on shirts and, you know, hoodies, lips, and they have zippers. Or it becomes very trendy. But I was like, oh, God, it's, it's an idea that I know who do that, you know? <laughs> And I remember, yeah, when I saw your work, it was beautiful. I mean, it is beautiful. And the lips, they are so gorgeous. They look 3Ds. I mean, when you look at them, it's perfection. That's the perfect <laughs> lip that any woman wish to have. Those like juicy, beautiful lips. And the zipper is so well done. The idea was just so amazing that when I see that, I was like, amazing. But that, I mean... That was really selfish, you know, like once again, in the arts, I'm, I'm very, I don't think that I engage like other gallery do, maybe because, you know, it, it's, I'm maybe new year in the business compared to, you know, other galleries that I hear for, you know, a long time and they're huge, you know, part of the industry for, for a long time and they're, you know, way bigger than mine. They have, you know, galleries all over, you know, the world, but me, I go with my feelings and my instincts more. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow, I remember I was like, oh my God, she's amazing. It just <laughs> yeah. maybe work on the corner that has to be for me a little bit more, you know, positive and more, you know. Yeah. But you did, I love the leaves that you did with the California leaves. And and um, I mean, the palm, was it the palm trees, the Bavana trees? Yeah, it was leaves? Beverly Hills. Hotel. Yeah, the Beverly Hills, exactly. With the pink, the, the light pink, it was gorgeous. It is, it is gorgeous. Thank you. I like it. And I'm so excited to to just have like um to see more of the new series of the diamond. It's coming. <laughs> yeah, and I definitely want to have more hoodies. Like I already told you that. I wish we have uh, for the boutique one of your hoodies. They're so nice. I mean, whenever you have more, let me I mean once of course COVID is gonna be, you know, um and the gallery will be open against to the public. But um when are you guys yeah, planning an opening? For now, you know, um, we're doing a lot of things online, of course, but physically open is not right now. It's hard to say because, you know, even, you know, the Los Angeles City didn't really say, they say, you know, non-essential business. But remember, the Cool Heart is part of a hotel, right? So, um, and it's located at the Sofitel Hotel, which is an amazing hotel in Los Angeles. But right now, you know, they're not allowed to open. You know, they have a lot of patients from the hospital, from what I heard. So, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, because it's so close by the city. Yeah, tonight. you guys are very close. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, right now, it's going to take maybe several months, but it's fine. I mean, I really do think to me, what matters the most is just to, you know, engage with the artist and, you know, be more present on, on you know, the, the websites and on the social media in a way that is really like creative. This is why I really wanted to do for me, you know, those there's like YouTube channel from the cool heart and and you know, I think it's a platform for the public to know you better, to understand your art. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's just not getting a paintings or spending money to just buy some things to put on your, you know, I mean, it's still great, of course, to just like, you know, uh, have an amazing painting in your living room for sure. But I really do think everything's going to take more sense in a deeper way after the COVID. I do think there's a before the COVID-19 and then after COVID-19. And I really do think people are going to listen to themselves more. And I wish that because we need that to 
be able to change the world, you know, because if every single one of us is closer to themselves in a good way, not in a self way and, you know, ego or whatever, no, and just, you know, down to earth and listen what's good for you, what is good for me. I have to do that, but is that good for me? It makes a lot of money. Am I going to be really happy, but I still have to pay my bills or, you know what? It's just an example, but sometimes you do things because you think you have to, but those things don't make you happy. Of course. So I really feel like it's it's another, another way to just engage uh, in the art scene. And I think it's really important for you just to like explain to us art lovers what you have in mind when you create and and it's just a way to be closer to you to your mindset and your arts you know yeah so tell me if you could describe for me in short words or sentence or what comes it's just like a little game um what is cool for you what is cool for me yeah because we're the cool heart right what makes something cool? What is cool to you? If you think of something that is somebody or whatever. Um, <laughs> My daughter. Being so unique well. and brave and literally not caring what anyone thinks, I think is definitely like the coolest thing about anybody that's just like truly being yourself at school. Like literally. Oh. <laughs> not caring if anybody will like it, not caring to please anybody, just being true to yourself. To me, that's cool. And I feel like that usually comes with the territory of being creative, whether it's art, music. I think it's amazing. You just describe it all. This is what I talk about every day as much as I can as a mother to the kids. I'm like, yeah, you just have to be unique. You know, it doesn't matter what people think, you know, what you're capable yeah. of. Or... That's amazing. So you were, Lena, you were the cool heart of the day. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining the cool heart with Lena Valentina. Make sure you subscribe and leave a comment and follow us on Instagram at the cool heart.